Okay, so a discrete, what I mean by a discrete signal is something where like we know a time and we know a temperature at that one time. And then we got to wait some undefined period of time and then we get another time and temperature. And we don't know what the temperature was between those points. And that's how we collect all our data in the real world, all right? So a discrete signal is a series of numbers. We have a series of numbers. For example, a temperature uh, record. So for a discrete signal, data points like we deal with of finite number, all right, we have a finite number of these data points. We'll say n data points. Then we've got this series of data points, xn, which is, you know, like the data point at time zero, the data point at time one, the data point at time two all the way to the data point of time n minus one. This n minus one is just because we started at zero. All right, so we have n discrete data points. Then we can, the discrete Fourier transform We use a sum instead of a integral because we're in discrete space. X of n is basically like our, our function of time. These are our samples in time. E to the minus i times two pi. over n times k times n. All right, so x sub k, this big x, is the Fourier transform for frequency k. All right, so if we wanted to know what the Fourier transform of our data set for this frequency k is, we got to do this sum nation. And we basically take all of our elements from n equals zero to n equals to n minus one, and we multiply them times e to the minus i two pi n, whatever our k is that we're interested in, times n. Little n is, yeah, little n is like all of these guys starting at zero and going to n minus one. So this would just be x of n would be, for example, when n equals a zero, then this would be x zero, right? Big n is however the number of these that I have. All right, so this guy is an important equation for us. We're gonna code this one up. This is the discrete Fourier transform. And it gives me the value of the Fourier series for this sampling frequency. All right, so if I calculate the Fourier transform for every frequency, for these K, for a bunch of different frequencies, then I'm going to get sort of the portion of the signal that. Um, 
that comes from that given frequency. And the amplitude of that sine wave, so this is, we can think about X as, as being sort of the, the portion of the frequency or portion of the signal that comes from that frequency. We can calculate the amplitude of the signal at that frequency. And that's basically the strength of the signal. Like how big is the signal at this frequency? Uh, the amplitude is the strength. of the signal at frequency K. All right, and, uh, and we'll call this uh, the amplitude A sub K, that should be a sub. All right, and so the equation to calculate the frequency, A sub K is equal to one over N. We're gonna put a star here, times the absolute value of X sub K. All right, so X sub K, we're doing this in the complex plane. There was that minus E to the minus I thing. So now X has real and imaginary parts. All right, so if we were, if we were doing this hardcore math, then we could write out what the absolute value of a imaginary number is. And that's this, it's the square root of the real part of X sub K squared plus the imaginary part of X sub K squared. All right. When we're, when we do this in, um, in Python, if it gets an imaginary number, it, it Python has a, a data type for imaginary numbers. If it gets an imaginary number and you tell it to take the absolute value of that imaginary number, it will automatically do this square root of the real and the imaginary part. You don't have to do that. All right, so this is how we can calculate the amplitude. So this will be equation three, that's important for us. And then the phase, of the wave tells us the delay all right so we may we may um we may have an annual uh frequency that's really dominant but it's delayed by a day for example so the phase tells us the um, tells us something about the delay or the or the lag. Yes, I can't see that. That's what I can't. That work? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this guy, 
we can figure out the phase is equal to the arc tangent imaginary part of xk and the real part of xk and this is the uh this is the two argument form for the arc tangent All right, so um, in principle, we could take any signal and we can break it up into, we can figure out the amplitude or the contribution to that signal from a given frequency, all right? And we can figure out whether that frequency is delayed or not. The lag thing, we do a lot less. We do the calculate the important frequencies quite often, right? We might be really interested if there's a component of this signal that's really strongly varying on a day-to-day -day basis, all right? We might be very interested if, if there's a strong component that's varying on a monthly basis or something like that. And so we do a lot of this kind of procedure where we're interested in what the major frequencies are that are contributing to our signal. Um, so we do this in a variety of fields, seismic wave analysis, man, they do spectral, they call this spectral decomposition all the time. What frequencies of seismic waves are, are we receiving? And that tells us something about the type of source. So um, for example, a field, that I dabble in a bit is monitoring underground, underground explosions. So uh, like a sort of traditional chemical explosion versus a nuclear explosion gives you various different kinds of rattles in the earth. And this kind of decomposition is one of the main ways they're looking at that. So they're trying to break away, break up this um, seismic wave into high frequency versus low frequency uh, partitions and see whether there's different sort of fingerprints for a nuclear or a conventional explosive, right? So just an example of places we do this, we do it so a lot in seismicity, um, any kind of time wave analysis, so a lot of temperature analysis, uh, disaster analysis. We might be interested if, if uh, landslides have any kind of temporal frequency to them, right? So. Um, if we if we had a long landslide record and we did a Fourier analysis and found a whole bunch of strength in that in that sample at month at you know six monthly um, frequencies, we would know that every six months something's going on that's increasing the landslides, and then we could think about why would that be. All right, so. Um, One caveat. So we have two main equations to do a Fourier transform. This first one, two, the discrete Fourier transform, and we'll, we're going to do one today. You'll see this because of Python's element-wise structure. This is going to be like three lines of code. It's really easy. All right. And then, um, and then we got to calculate the amplitude, which is, again, really easy. We just say take the absolute value of the discrete Fourier transform, but then we got to normalize it by the number of samples. Um, now, it turns out um, this has something to do, this is basically normalizing by the number of valid frequencies we can pull out of our data set, all right? And it turns out that we have to have two samples like the minimum number of samples we can have on a wave. If we have less than two samples for a given wavelength, 
then we can't resolve that wave. This is called the Nyquist theorem, and it says you have to have at least two samples per sine wave. All right. So um, if we're if we only have one, say we only had one sample. Uh, a, a good example is our temperature data set. Where we have the average daily temperature per day. There's no way we can say anything about is there a daily trend in the temperature? There probably is, but we only have one number in the daily trend. So there's no way we could say it has variation at a higher resolution than basically two days would be the, the highest resolution. We could say that there's some kind of periodic signal every two days. All right, so what does that mean? It means that N star, so for real samples, or for real signals, we can only consider frequencies with two samples. Per wave. So that means our sampling rate tells us what the resolution or the minimum or the highest frequency wave we can see is. So that means that N star is equal to the number of samples that we have divided by two. And all this is, is in the waiting term, it's gonna tell us how many frequencies we can actually see. This N star is really the number of samples divided by two. Okay, so, This is called this is called the Nyquist theorem. Two samples per wave. Per wave minimum. In, uh... Okay, so we're going to uh, play around today. We're going to create, first of all, we're going to create a con, our own sort of synthetic uh, time series that's the sum of a bunch of waves of different frequencies. And then we're going to use the Fourier transform to see whether we can pull out those frequencies and amplitudes. All right, so let's put it to the test. So open up Spider. I'm going to switch my out. Oh. oh, maybe I can't do that. All right, open up Spider. And get yourself to a a good folder.
All right. So I'm going to uh, to save this file right now in my assignment three folder. And I'll call this uh, Fourier transform. All right, and we will import uh, PyPlot, so matplotlib. All right, so I'm gonna define a sampling rate. And this is samples per time. So we'll, we're gonna, this is gonna be samples per second because we'll just do all of this in Hertz. So uh, SR is equal to 100. This means that we have 100 samples per second. That's what the sampling rate means, 100 samples per second. Okay. Let's say we've got a, uh, consider a, uh, um, a time interval of of one second, all right? Actually, let's do it for two, two seconds. Oh, actually, that doesn't make any sense. One second. All right, the time interval between samples is gonna be one second divided by the sampling rate. This is just, this is just one over the sampling rate. So that's, that's how long it is between samples. So we will create a time vector. that goes from zero to one second every, uh, and it's divided up by our um, sampling interval. All right, so if I were to run this, guy and I checked out what T was, it's an array and it goes from zero up to once, one second minus one by every one over my sampling rate. Okay, now let's create our synthetic Signal 
um, from three sine waves. So Yeah. All right, so this would be wave one, uh, wave two, let's make the frequency four and the amplitude one. Wave three will make the frequency seven. And, and these frequencies are Hertz. What do I mean when I say hurts? Anybody know what hurts means? Yeah, so this is waves per second. Like when I say a frequency of one, that means one wave per second. A frequency of seven means seven waves per second. So for example, wave three here, has a much higher frequency, there's seven waves per second versus wave one, which only has one wave per second. Uh, amplitude, 0 0.5. Um, and we'll just say X is equal to X1 plus X2 plus X, Oh, I better change these guys' names. And let's just take a look at our signal. So if I run this, here's the signal I get. So you can see this is, doesn't look necessarily like a really uniform signal. Some kind of messy random thing.
Okay, anybody not able to make their synthetic data? All right, not hearing that, I will say let's move forward. Okay. Let's now define our discrete Fourier transform function. So let's just actually, let's go back really quick and look at this. So we need, we need to calculate this equation, all right? Um, and there's, I guess, two things I'd like to point out here. In order to calculate the value for one value of frequency, you have to do a sum over all n samples. All right, and then to go to the next frequency, you're supposed to do a sum over all n frequencies, all right? So this could be done in a for loop, but we're gonna take advantage of the fact that Python does everything element-wise. So we're gonna have two vectors. This one is a vector that goes from zero up to N number of samples. All right. This one is a vector of frequencies that go up from zero to N. It is shaped differently. So this one is one row and columns. This one is one column and rows. All right. All right, so if in the exponent we use a J, which I've done here, Python's automatically going to recognize that we're working with imaginary numbers. This is now a column vector, and this is that row vector. So this thing's gonna end up being actually a, like a matrix that's an N by N matrix. And then we can calculate for our whole 
time series. All right, so this is, we just take the dot product of, of X and E to the minus negative two J pi K N over N. All right, so this, this is now a function we can use to calculate, ooh, what did I do? We can use to calculate the discrete Fourier transform for any signal. We just need to give that signal in to our function. So we can calculate the discrete Fourier transform here. Let's calculate a couple things here. All right, this guy here is the number of samples. This is the total sampling time which is just the number of samples divided by the sampling rate. So if I've got 100 samples and I'm sampling at 100 samples per second, then my total time is one second. And these are all my, this is the vector of all frequencies up to the sampling rate. Now we said that we can't have all the frequencies. We can only have the frequencies up to two samples per frequency. So we're gonna do some uh, limitation here. We're gonna cut off, we're gonna say the number of valid frequencies.
this uh this double divide just means make it round so round it down it doesn't it doesn't calculate a float it calculates an integer All right so we're only gonna we're gonna only keep half of the of the frequencies so our uh our valid frequencies are now The frequencies that go from zero or the start to n star. Okay, so let's just go over what we did. We said, all right, we can only use we can only use samples. We can only have waves where we have two samples per wave. So the number of total samples that are valid is, is the total number of samples divided by two. This limits our frequencies we can consider. So here I've just pulled out the frequencies that go from zero to the frequencies that correspond to two samples per wave. And I've only pulled out that portion of our, um, of our Fourier transform. All right, so now we can just make a plot. Let's look at this. So we'll make a figure.
And we're going to throw another one in one, two, two. But the only difference here, we're just going to zoom in. All right. Don't see any errors that spider's finding right now. So let's see if it worked. Okay, so let's look at my plot. This is a plot. Of frequency versus amplitude. All right, and so right here at a frequency of one, I have an amplitude of three. Let's see what we got here. So wave one was a frequency of one and amplitude of three. Wave two was a frequency of four with an amplitude of one. And wave three was a frequency of seven and an amplitude of 0.5. All right, so my Fourier transform was able to pull out the dominant frequencies and calculate the correct amplitude. So now I could play with these. I could say, well, what if I made this a frequency of uh, 10 and amplitude of, I don't know, eight. Run it and see what I get. Ten amplitude of eight. It's pulling out all the right frequencies again. What does my signal look like? So at any rate, you can play with those. You can create wacky new signals, and then you can pull out the frequencies and amplitudes. Now this code we can start to play with and modify to do a Fourier transform on a natural time series, for example, our temperature time series for the homework. At the end of the day, it's just modifying things like the sampling rate, the time series. We're gonna have to do a little bit more signal cleanup. We can get into that on Thursday. All right, so I'm happy to get people running on this, get their discrete Fourier transform running if you got problems. And if not, things I think that we could easily spend time working on are um, sine wave fit to data um, or thinking about how to do this discrete Fourier transform on real data. So yeah, Gus, yours is not working.
Let's see, let's put it, put it down here. So put an line. Oh, 
Let's see, I got a question on chat. 